Well, good afternoon and welcome to a very wet and windy day here in Cambridge. Today, I've got a question for you all. Is it financially viable to add a battery to your house if the sole reason for having that battery is either to import power at night and then use it during the day or import power just to sell it back to the grid when you can make a bit of a profit? Now, some of you know, I've got a bit of a battery problem. I put my hand up to it. I love my home batteries and I'm always looking to see, is it financially viable to have more? Now, I think I've got a nice space here on the wall where I could easily fit another 10, maybe 20 kilowatts of batteries. Do I need 20 kilowatts of batteries? Absolutely not. But is it financially viable? Can we actually make money by buying power at a cheap rate during the night and then selling it back to the grid. Let's head back into the office and let's take a look at some numbers. Well, it's a little bit warmer in here. So let's dive into this topic because this is something that I've been thinking about for, I would say the last six months. And before we go any further, let me just be very clear. I'm not an accountant. Um, I'm not many things, but I'm certainly not an accountant. So there's going to be things in here where I'm sure anyone that does any accounting will look at my numbers and say, you've missed this, you haven't done that. But let me explain some of the assumptions I've made and some of the things that I have and I haven't accounted for in this. So the first thing to say is this really isn't an in-depth financial analysis. This is some numbers in a spreadsheet that are really designed to give me a ballpark figure. So I'm not looking for, you know, accurate to two decimal places. I just want to really understand is, is it financially viable to buy a battery and then use it either to buy and sell energy or to uh, buy in energy cheaply and use it during the night? And I really want to know how long will it take to get my money back? Because with my current setup, it's paid for itself. I'm in positive territory. So any investments I make now really have to stand on their own. They have to pay for themselves. For the purposes of this exercise, we're going to assume we have no solar, no other batteries. We're just looking to buy a single battery, install it on the side of the house, and use that battery without any solar panels attached to it. Now, the one thing I'm not gonna account for here is VAT. And um, I, in all the calculations that I see in lots of other people's videos, most people don't really factor in the VAT. And the reason is, is that you know, when you import energy, you pay 5% VAT on that. But you don't pay any, any uh, VAT when you export that energy. So if you were to buy energy in, you'd be paying an extra 5% on it. When you export it, you'd obviously just get your export tariff, but you wouldn't retrieve that 5% VAT. So here are the assumptions that I've made. Now, battery costs are very wildly, but I've assumed about an 800 pound per kilowatt hour, which means that a 10 kilowatt battery is gonna cost you roughly 8,000 pounds. Now, I know all the Give Energy guys are already screaming at me, um, but this is a cost, an installed cost. So this includes the electricians to come and put it in. So I think about for a 10 kilowatt battery, around about 8,000 pounds, fully installed is a reasonable price to be working off. And the beauty of this all being in a spreadsheet, if, if somebody says, well, actually it's not that, it's more like 500 pounds a kilowatt hour. Fine, we can change it. We can see what the payback period for that would be. I'm gonna assume a 10 kilowatt hour battery, just because 10 is an easy round number. Um, I'm going to get, look at an expected capacity after 10 years of constant use of about 7 kilowatts. So over the course of a 10-year period, we would lose about 30% of the capacity. Now, that's slightly more than most of the vendors are, um, are saying would happen in real life, but this is just, an, an, an again, a number we can change. Um, so if you take that 100% when new, 70% after 10 years, it averages out at about 8.5 kilowatt hours. So we'll, we'll do our numbers using the, the 8.5 um, kilowatt hour number across the 10 year period. 
And I'm also going to assume a wastage of about 10%. So um, for every kilo or every 10 kilowatts you pull in, you're only really going to get nine. Or if you pull in 10, you're really going to have to put 11 in to get 10 stored in your battery. Now, some things I'm not taking into account. Like I say, I'm not an accountant, so I'm not getting into depreciation of assets, capital costs, or also the number of cycles that different batteries have, because different battery warranties have a different number of cycles. Do they class full cycles, partial cycles? Um, some batteries have an unlimited cycle. So again, there's just too many variables here to bring in. And again, don't forget, we're not looking for an exact number. We're looking for a ballpark figure. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at across the most popular tariffs. So we'll look at um, Octopus Intelligent Go, Octopus Go, um, Octopus Cozy and Octopus Flux. We'll also look at Eon Next Drive as well. Now there's a couple of others. I'm sure the Tomato guys are out there. I probably shouldn't call you Tomato guys. The people on the Tomato Lifestyle are probably saying, well, what about us? You didn't use Tomato. Why not? Um, tomato doesn't seem to have an export tariff. So obviously if one of the things that you're going to be doing with these batteries is exporting energy, then you need an export tariff to be able to do that. And the usual things, EDF um, refused to give me a quote online. They wanted, again, a ton of personal information. They wanted to, be able to send me a code and then have me type a code in to release the quote. Um, all way too much hassle for this, this exercise. So let's start with the simplest model. And the simple model is a simple buy and sell model. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to buy energy in when it is the cheapest we can buy it. We're going to store it in the battery and then we're going to discharge it from the battery back to the grid when it is most advantageous to us depending on the tariff that we're on. And we're going to do one cycle per day. Obviously on some tariffs, depending on the size of the inverter, you might be able to get two cycles a day in. Uh, but just to keep the numbers simple, we'll work on a one cycle per day. So fully charge the battery at night time, fully discharge the battery during the day. So how long would it take if you did that 365 days a year, just buying energy, selling energy, how long would it take to pay for your battery? Quite a long time is the honest answer here. Now, what you can see here on the chart are the different tariffs. Um, obviously, Octopus Cozy, they're in the middle. Um, not the tariff to be on if you're looking to trade energy. But what I've got there is the uh, the different tariffs in the chart. I've got the price that you would buy the energy in on those different tariffs at the cheapest point of the tariff and the price that you would sell the energy for. And again, the reason that the cozy one is so different, the difference between the buy and sell price is so small, it would take forever. We then take the difference and then we divide that by the cost of the battery and we'd be able to work out how many years it would take us to pay back. So doing that, we'd be looking at somewhere between 24.2 years and 165 years if you're an octopus cozy. So it's not really viable, is it? If you're just doing this to try and make money with your battery, um, the battery probably comes with an eight to 10 year warranty, maybe 10 at max. So to be able to have this battery run for 24 years just to break even doesn't make any sense. And 165 years, well, I'll be long in the ground, long before that. So again, not going to worry about that. So now let's look at it from a different perspective. What if we were to buy energy in at night for the, from the cheapest part, and then use it during the day from the battery into our house so that we wouldn't have to buy um, energy from the grid at the more expensive rates? And again, we'll work on the principle of one cycle per day. So how long would that take? Well, the numbers are much more palatable at this point. So um, we can see, again, you can see here in the in the chart, um, Cozy is still a little bit farther out at about 21 years. Um, but really, we're looking at about 14 years to pay back the battery um, at the current rates. Now, that's not to say that these tariffs will be exactly the same for the next 14 years. The likelihood is, is they will they will get better for some periods and they will get worse for some periods. But if we just assume that they were going to be the same, we'd still be looking at about 14 years to pay back the battery. So yeah, somewhere between 14 and 21 years, buying energy at night and then using it up during the day. Because the battery warranties, now I should be really clear here, 
Batteries are not going to stop working the day your warranty finishes. I know some people believe that, that you know, my car warranty was, it was three years and it stopped working at three years and one day. Um, there's, there isn't any built-in obsolescence, but with battery technology, we all know that you will get degradation over time. Um, and the, if the battery is warrantied up to 10 years, usually they have a warranty where it says something like, we'll have at least 80% of its original capacity after 10 years. And if it's got less than that, then you can get it replaced under warranty. But again, you can't guarantee that, but your battery will continue to work. It will just get less and less over time. But still, to be able to expect it to run 50% over its warranty period and still have a usable capacity in it might be stretching it a little bit too much. So given the earliest payback is about 14.3 years, um, I probably won't be buying a battery to do this exact kind of thing. Um, as I say, we have enough capacity in our battery today to run our house for, for most of the year. This was just an idea because I've got a battery problem um, that I thought maybe if I get one more, I could make a little bit of money. But unfortunately, the numbers just don't seem to stack up for that. Unless. Now, I'm sure everyone who's, who's watching this video probably has an opinion on Mr. Musk. And um, Mr. Musk hasn't been sort of showering himself in glory lately. But what we're starting to see is people really turning away from the Tesla brand. Um, just look at the, the Tesla car numbers in Europe um, and, and certain parts of the US, um, in some cases down 50 to 60 percent. If we were to see something similar with Tesla Powerwalls, where customers were just refusing to have Tesla Powerwalls installed and it caused the price to crash, I might revisit it then because I can always paint over the Tesla logo on the side of the battery so that nobody can see it. Now, I'm sure I've got a million things wrong here. So please do hit me up in the comments if you think that I haven't accounted for something or I've accounted for something wrong. As I say, not an accountant. I'm happy to be told that I did something wrong. But those numbers as they stand just don't really stack up for me. Now, before I go, I've got a shameless plug. Now, some of you may have known that back in January, I did my first live stream. Um, during my live streams, I talk about um, all the money that we've raised for good causes. Uh, that's money that you guys have raised by watching my videos. All the ad revenue that we generate in 2025 is going to be going to good causes. Um, you've done a sterling job up until now. So far, just in January, you've raised 589 pounds and six pence. Um, much, much more to come. The February live stream uh, will be going live in a couple of days. So if you are a subscriber, please watch out for it in your, your channel. I'd love to see you on the live stream. We generally take about 30 minutes to go through all the numbers. I show you how much energy I've used uh, as part of my net zero challenge. I show you how much money we've earned from ads and all sorts of other ways um, that, that you guys can contribute. And we'll do a bit of a Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, then I'm more than happy to, to spend some time online chatting with you all. So that's going to happen on Monday, the 3rd of March, um, around about 6 p.m. UK time. So again, if you can't make it, we'd love to see you live. If you can't make it live, then the recording will be available afterwards. Um, but I'd love to see you live. We, we had a really great time last time. We had, I think we had about 70 people last time, had some really great questions. So uh, yeah, love to do, to do that again with you all. So that's it for this video. I hope you found this useful. Again, the numbers didn't really turn out the way that I was expecting them to turn out. So again, if you've been thinking about buying a battery just purely from an investment point of view, hopefully these will sort of set you off in the right direction. But please do, if you notice anything that I got wrong in those numbers, please do let me know and uh, I will certainly make a correction. I'll correct them in the description of the video as well. And I'll also, uh, if need be, I'll redo the video with a, with a new set of numbers on there. With that, I'm going to sign off. Thank you very much for clicking on this video, and I'll see you next time for another one. Take care. Bye-bye.